See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to the slaughter, were sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place among evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, or spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush it and firm it. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great. He shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. He shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord.
Reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been similarly tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace, to receive mercy, and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, you offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he had suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Father gave me. 
So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guard seized Jesus, found him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and another disciples followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid who was the gatekeeper said to Peter, He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter, Peter was also standing there, keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple area where the people gather. And in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Again, Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the Praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the Praetorium in order to not be defiled, so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, At this Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest hand you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say, I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, <laughs> Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, And they struck him repeatedly. Once more Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify! Crucify! 
Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We know. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have the power to release you and I have the power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carried him across himself. He went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, In order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did, standing by the cross of Jesus where his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first, and then the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. And eyewitness has testified that his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled, not a bone of it will be broken. 
And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give us peace, to guard us and unite us throughout the entire world, and grant that leading our lives in quiet and tranquility, we may glorify God our Father. Almighty and ever-living God, who in Christ Reveal your glory to all the nations. Watch over the works of your mercy. That your church, spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our most holy Father, Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for service, may keep him safe and unharmed for the service of God's holy church to govern God's family of faith. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect our Pope, that under him we may grow in merit by reason of our faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Leonard, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the Church, and for the whole of God's faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Let us pray for those preparing for baptism, that God may open their hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness for all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they may become one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, you make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith of those preparing for baptism, so that reborn in the fountain of baptism, they may be added to the number of your children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his church. Almighty and ever-living God, you gather what is scattered, and you keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly upon the flock of Jesus, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together in integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people to whom our Lord first spoke that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and fidelity to his covenant. Almighty and ever-living God, you bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants. Graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may receive the fullness of redemption. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the path of salvation. Almighty and ever-living God, grant to those who do not believe in Jesus that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may discover the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in our mutual love and striving to understand you more fully, may be made perfect witnesses of your love in this world. Through Christ our Lord. Pray for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the path to God himself. Almighty and ever-living God, you created all people to seek you, always, by desiring you. And when they find you, to come to rest. Grant that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so enjoy, acknowledge you as one God and Father of our human family. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that God may direct their minds and hearts according to his will toward true peace and the freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of all peoples, look with favor on those who govern with authority over us that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God our Almighty Father, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, salvation to the dying. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that we may all rejoice that in our hour of need, your mercy is always at hand. Through Christ our Lord. And finally, let us pray for an end to the pandemic that afflicts our world, that God will heal the sick, strengthen the caregivers, and help us all to persevere. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life, health, and healing, look with compassion on our world, brought low by disease. Protect us in the midst of this grave challenge, and in your fatherly care, grant recovery to the stricken and success to those working to eradicate this scourge. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
at the Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. For I want to say the word as my soul.
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of Jesus. Preserve in us the work of your mercy, so that by sharing in this sacred mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May abundant blessing, O Lord, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of our resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 